Okay. <clears throat> so, let's talk for a second about how we can take a rotation matrix and get some angles from it. So if we have a rotation matrix that looks like something like this. So we have nine numbers. It's a three by three matrix. E, F, G, H. So the question is, what uh, what rotation um, uh, Euler angles can we get from this matrix? Well, if you want to know the short answer, then I'll give it to you now. So, first, you can find the y value by taking the arc sine of negative g. You can find the x by taking. the two parameter arc tangent of <coughs> of h and i h being your y and i being your x you can find the z rotation by taking the two parameter arc tangent of <clears throat> D and A. So there is your short answer. If you know what to do already, then cool. If you want to know why this is true, I'll keep going further, but if you know what to do just from looking at that, then by all means, you don't have to watch the rest of this video. Alright, so you're looking at two images right now. <clears throat> the one on top, uh, right here. These are the three rotation matrices that describe rotations around a particular axis. So if we have a th three axis system, with a Y, an X, and a Z. I apologize, by the way, for my handwriting. <coughs> then <coughs> RX on the top describes a rotation around the X axis. So well, let me get a different color here. So around this axis. And um, the RY describes a rotation around the Y-axis. Uh, in other words, the yaw. And RZ describes a rotation around the Z-axis. So, there's that. Okay, so theta for each one will rotate it around that axis, theta degrees or radians. Now this image on the bottom, this one right here, um, this matrix describes three rotations, one around the x-axis, one around the y-axis, and one around the z-axis. <coughs> So, in the picture, x is the number of degrees or radians that uh, you're going around the x-axis, rx, and 
y is the number of degrees or radians that you're going around the y-axis, uh, so ry. And z describes the number of degrees or radians around the z-axis. So, pitch, yaw, and roll. <clears throat> and <clears throat> the, the matrix that you see on the bottom is what you get when you multiply the three matrices together. Um, so, if you have a vector in space and you ro want to rotate it around one axis, then you just apply the rotation for the axis that you want. But if you, if you already know three angles and you want to rotate that vector around all three axes at once, you can use the matrix on the bottom. Okay, so you saw on the first slide that if you have a matrix, I'll try and write this small, Oops. if you have a matrix 3x3, three three, Okay, <clears throat> so you saw on the first slide that uh, y, or the yaw, is equal to the arc sine of negative g. Now, you may already see where this comes from, um, but this is just some simple algebra. Notice uh, we're only looking right now at this number and this number. So, according to this, uh, this matrix up top, the negative sign of y is equal, actually, to g. So, we can solve this equation for y just by multiplying both sides by negative 1 leaving us with sine of y is equal to negative g, and then taking the arc sine of both sides uh, will eliminate the sine, and we're left with y is equal to the arc sine of negative g. So that's where that comes from. Okay, so now let's... Uh, go on a mystical quest for the X rotation or the pitch. Um, <clears throat> so, we're just going to look at uh, at these numbers. Notice, by the way, how we're, well, we're, we're actually going to just totally ignore these numbers. These, these are meaningless to us, uh, which is cool because they are rather complicated. Um, we don't need them to compute the X, the Y, or the Z rotations. Um, so, uh, you might remember that, uh, that x, the x rotation is equal to the two parameter arc tangent, oh, whoops, the two parameter arc tangent of, uh, h and i, so, Notice, um, notice how h is equal to, h is, let me see if I can do this, h is this number right here, they're equal to each other, i is this number right here, they're equal to each other, um, so how do we get x from that? Well, Notice how sine of x cosine of y divided by cosine of x cosine of y is actually equal to the tangent um, oops, tangent of x. That's a little trig identity. Um, I mean, cosine y, we have a factor of that, that cancels out. All that we're left with is this, 
which is the same thing as tangent of x. So, <clears throat> um, if we know h and we know i, then x must be equal to the arc tangent of h and i. That's a two parameter arc tangent. And we we've chosen a two parameter arc tangent because there's four possibilities. They can both be positive. So this number, this number, they could either be both positive, or h is positive and i is negative, or h is negative and i is positive, or they could be both negative. Um, if we decided to do a single parameter arc tangent, there would only be three possibilities. Actually, I'm sorry, there would only be two possibilities. Um, the, the one parameter would be positive, um, or it could be negative, and we would lose a, a, a degree of, um, of, of signality for that answer. So, uh, the, the two-parameter arctangent will give us the correct quadrant for the angle. All right, so now we're going to find the Z rotation. And we're going to be taking a look at these numbers here, A and D, and these up here. And remember, we're not paying any attention at all to those four numbers. Um, so don't pay any attention to those. We don't care about them. Um, this is the same type of deal as before. Simply note that sine of z, oh, whoops. sine of z, cosine of y, divided by cosine of z, cosine of y, Cosine of y cancels off. All that we're left with is sine of z over cosine of z, which is equal to the tangent of z. <coughs> so all we need to do to find z is take the two-parameter arc tangent of d and a.